Hi, I'm Mia Ree of Good Elephant Pottery. Welcome to my studio and my online pottery school. This is project number one of the Core Skills series, Small Bowl, Well Trimmed. This project is meant for beginners, but I made this video free because I don't want you to skip it, whether you're a beginner or not. There are skills and terminology included here that I will expect you to know for all of the other videos. And this will give you a good sense of whether my style of teaching is right for you. I believe that learning to throw is a long-term, one step at a time process. And these videos will provide you with a structured program to follow. My goal for you is that once you finish all of the core skills projects, you will be able to throw any pot you want. So let's get started. These are the tools you'll need. It's a basic project, so you need only basic tools. You need sponges, and any kind you like is fine. I like both of these. This is an inexpensive synthetic sponge. This is a Cheryl Mud Tools Blue sponge, and I'll show you when and how I use both of these. You need a needle tool. This is the kind I like. It has a wooden handle and a really skinny needle. You need a tool for trimming off the excess clay at the base of your pot when you're done throwing it. This is a Dolan 120, and this is my favorite tool for that job. You need a cutoff wire. You need a small or medium sized trimming tool. Any trimming tool you like is fine. This is a Dolan 460, which is probably my favorite trimming tool. I think it's really versatile. And this last one is optional. This is a Cheryl Mud Tools Green Rib. I use this to burnish smooth the surfaces of my trimmed pots because my clay body is pretty rough when it's been trimmed. So you may or may not need to do this depending on your clay. Let's talk about clay for beginners or for anybody who is still searching for a clay body that you like. Ask your clay supplier to recommend something that is designed for throwing and contains some amount of grog as opposed to something that is very smooth. Groggy clay bodies hold their structure better while you're throwing it and also while it's drying and while it's firing. Even a full-time professional like me chooses a groggy clay body for those reasons. So this is definitely what I recommend for beginners as well. Now let's talk about wedging. Wedging is the process of preparing your clay into a state that is ideal for throwing. In other words, homogeneous and free of air bubbles. I am not going to cover wedging in my videos because there are really good wedging tutorials already available for free on the internet. I've linked to some of them on my website, so go check those out if you want a wedging lesson. Okay, now we can start talking about throwing. Here's something fundamental about the way I throw and the way I teach others to throw. I divide throwing into distinct phases. After you've centered your clay and established the floor of your pot, the two most important phases come next. The first one is called growing. Growing is when you pull your clay up off the wheel head and up into the air. You're making your pot bigger and you're making the walls thinner and you're doing this in straight lines. You're aiming for the proportion of the pot you're trying to make, but you're going to keep the walls of your pot straight during this phase. And once you're done growing your pot, then you can move into the shaping phase. You can add curves or any other shaping to your pot. And the reason you do this in two separate phases is that once you start adding curves to your walls, your ability to grow the pot is over. It's pretty hard to get clay to move around a curve, even a subtle curve like this one. Whereas it's pretty easy to get clay to move in a straight line. So for this pot, we are first going to grow the pot into this form with straight walls, and then we are going to add this curve to the pot. This is one pound of clay, which I have slapped into a ball, just because you're closer to being centered if you start with a piece of clay that's almost round already. I'm going to smack it down pretty hard on the wheel head, and that's just to help it stick. I'll get the wheel spinning a little slowly and I'll give it a few more hard slaps downward. And again, that's just to help it stick. Uh, so um, again, this is video one. So I'm gonna start this video with a few tips for centering for those of you who think you need them. Um, it starts with the feet. 
you're going to have one foot on your pedal. Your other foot needs to be flat on the ground. I've seen a lot of pottery students over the years where their heel goes up in the air and dangling around. That's just not a stable position for your foot. So make sure both of your heels are down, either on your pedal or on the floor. The next thing I'll say is if you can, Grab the sides of your splash pan with your knees. Um, your splash pan is a really stable object, so if you can, grab them with your knees. This is a really good way to brace yourself onto something solid. Um, you should be sitting pretty close to your pot. The correct position is that when you lean over, your nose should be this far over on the other side of your pot. All right, so on to centering. Um, I'm gonna start with the most frequently taught method of centering, and it starts with your elbow. Put your elbow into your hip bone, which is a very stable part of your body. Um, if you can, that is, if you have short arms like I do, you might need to move your elbow down your leg a little bit in order to reach your clay. And if you have to do that, that's fine. Um, also notice I'm going to brace my forearm against my splash pan. Again, your splash pan is very stable, so if you can, brace your arm on the splash pan. You can brace both of your arms on the splash pan. Again, that's a good idea. The more points of bracing you can find, the better. All right, so I'm gonna add a few handfuls of water and with my arm in this position, I'm gonna use this part of my left hand and push inward towards the clay. And I'm gonna use this part of my right hand and push downward from the top. So between those two forces, the in and the down, I should be able to squeeze this clay into a centered shape. Going to reach for a little more water. Okay, that's pretty close. Um, all right, so now that I've demonstrated the, the most common form of centering, I'm going to now tell you that this is actually not the way that I do it. I do it differently, and I'm going to show you the way I do it in case you want to try it. I prefer to center by pulling the clay towards me from the back. So I'll put the fingers of my right hand here. Um, I'll put the fingers of my left hand here covering and supporting my right hand and this part of my left hand is going to be pushing down from the top. I think this method has a lot of advantages. I mean for starters I think it's a lot more stable to pull in this direction towards you. I mean I have this like triangle of bracing going on and to me it makes more sense to have your clay inside of that triangle pulling your forces towards your center of gravity it feels a lot more solid to me this way. Whereas where when you're pushing your forces away from your center of gravity, it's a little hard to control the direction that your forces are going in. Whereas if your hands are braced together and you're pulling towards you, it's very easy to control which, which way your forces are going. The other, way, the other reason I like to do it this way is because my fingers are much smaller than this part of my left hand. So my fingers do a better job of centering the clay all the way down to the base of the clay. Whereas this part of my hand doesn't necessarily reach down into that corner very well. So I would say even if you prefer to center from this direction, that's fine. Do it this way as much as you can, but at least do a little bit of it from this direction at the end of centering so that you can make sure to get it centered all the way down to the base. Before we start to throw this pot, I'm gonna first talk about this sponge. You'll notice that when I'm throwing, I almost always have this sponge in my right hand, and that is to prevent friction between my right hand and the clay. Um, you'll see me do this a lot. I'll be washing out the sponge of as much clay as I can, um, wringing it out until it's almost dry, and in this state, this is how I keep it in my hand. And the reason I do this is because this allows me to throw with a lot less water if the sponge is always in my hand. Um, that's important because I feel like you have a lot more insight and control over what you're doing if your pot is not soaking wet. And the other advantage is if you throw with a lot of water, your clay is eventually gonna become waterlogged and it's just gonna collapse on its own weight. So if you throw with less water, you have more time to work on your pot before you reach that state. Okay, so with my right hand holding my almost dry, clean sponge, I'm gonna to start to open this pot right down the middle. I'm gonna use my fingers and my sponge and the fingers of my left hand are gonna support the fingers of my right hand. I'm trying to make a floor that is half an inch thick. 
Okay, so I think that's half an inch thick, but I'm never going to guess about that. I'm always going to use a needle tool and measure the thickness of a floor. Okay, so that's just about perfect. It's about half an inch thick, and this is enough clay to allow us to trim a nice foot ring into this bowl later. All right, so now that I have established the thickness of the floor, I'm now going to establish the width of the floor. So again, with my right hand and the sponge, with my left finger supporting that, I'm going to pull out the floor. This is a pretty small pot, so the floor is only going to be about that big. And before I go any further, I'm going to go back and forth across this floor just a couple of times to make sure it's smooth and compressed. All right, so now uh, we've established the floor of this pot. Uh, so moving forward, um, we're entering the growing phase of this pot. And before we go there, I'm going to talk about my left hand. The, re the way I prevent friction between my left hand and the pot is to make sure my left hand is clean or as clean as possible and to make sure the surface of the inside of my pot is evenly wet. And that's really easy to do by taking your damp sponge and just swiping the inside of your pot. If you have puddles or dry spots on the inside of your pot, then your bare hand is going to skip and drag against your clay. But as long as your hand is clean and the surface of the inside of your pot is evenly wet, you're not going to have any problems like that. All right. So um, I'm going to take both of my hands, the bare one and the sponged hand, and I'm going to grab the wall, the base of this pot here and I'm going to start to grow the pot diagonally in this direction in a straight line. I am applying pretty much the same amount of pressure from both my inside and my outside hands. Okay, so this is not something I'm going to do in one pool. I'm going to do it in two or three pools. And on that last pool, the surface on the inside of the pot felt like it was a little bit dry, so I'm just going to swipe it and give it a little moisture and make sure my hand is clean. Do one more pool. Notice how my left thumb is touching my right hand. I do this whenever possible, and for a small pot like this, it's almost always possible. Okay, so this is the end of the growing phase. This is about the size, height, and width that I expect to get out of one pound of clay. So now we're going to transition from growing into shaping. So just to go back to our drawing for a second, we're going to take this form and now we're going to add this curve to the pot. All right, so to do the shaping, I'm still going to hold the stamp sponge on, in my outside hand, only that now this hand is not going to apply any pressure. This hand is just here for support. All of the pressure, all of the work is going to be done by my inside hand uh, pushing outward. So I'm going to start at the base of this wall and work my way to the top. Again, my inside hand is pushing outward and my outside hand is just there for support. It's not applying any pressure. All right, good. I'm going to do one more pass at this, only this time I'm going to lean all the way over so I can watch the profile of the outside of this pot. Just to make sure that curve is nice and smooth. All right, good. So that's the end of shaping. We just have a few more things to do for finishing. Uh, the first thing I'll do is just check to see how level this rim is. This is actually pretty level. It's a little bit unlevel. Um, if you feel like your rim is level, you don't need to cut off the top of your rim. I'm going to demonstrate how to do that just in case you do. This is another job for the needle tool. Um, I'm going to use the fingers of my left hand on the inside near the top of the rim for support and I'm going to hold the needle tool in this direction and I'm going to move the tool in a move like this until I hit my fingers on the inside of the pot. This is not a move that you do from this direction. From this direction, it's really easy to snag the rim of your pot onto your needle tool. If you come at it from this direction and move your needle tool like this, 
it's a lot easier on the rim of your pot. Your, your pot right now is in a pretty fragile state, so you need to keep that in mind. And everything you do at this near finished state needs to be very gentle. Okay. All right, so now that I have cut off the rim of this pot, I have these unpleasantly sharp corners on the edge of my rim and those need to be rounded off. Um, this is one time where I think it's okay to use a lot of water on your sponge. When your sponge is very wet, then this job of rounding out the corners will go faster. And also having a very wet sponge allows you to use a light touch. And again, your pot is very fragile at this state, so using a light touch is important. And um, you don't really have to worry about waterlogging your pot at this stage because you're almost done. So go ahead and use a lot of water when you're finishing that rim. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna do for this pot is uh, I'm gonna wring out my sponge and at the very bottom of the middle of this pot, I'm gonna throw in a little spiral and that's optional. There's no reason to do that other than that it looks nice and it adds a little bit more finish to your pot. All right, so now with my Dolan 120 tool, I'm gonna to trim off some of this extra clay down here. You don't have to get it all off. You're gonna have some extra clay down there. You just wanna get some of it off. And that's just to make sure the pot dries as evenly as possible between now and the leather hard stage. All right, so with a cutoff wire, I'm gonna run a cutoff wire underneath and then I'm gonna set it aside to become leather hard. And in my studio, that usually takes overnight. The bowl is leather hard now and it's ready to trim. Leather hard means that the surface is dry and the bowl can hold its shape when you tilt it, but it should still be soft enough that you can gouge it with your fingernail. And I also like it when the rims are still a little bit flexible when you try to wiggle it. If the pot is any drier than this, I think it starts to get harder to trim it. Uh, so what is proper trimming? According to me, it means that we are going to measure how thick this pot is in a few key places before we trim it. And yes, that means we are going to poke some holes in the pot. And I know some of you might think that's a weird idea, but um, I'm here to teach you that this is the fastest and most accurate way to get to a well-trimmed pot. So where do we need to measure the pot? Well, first we need to decide where we're gonna put the foot ring. Um, for a pot this small, it's not that important where you decide where to put the foot ring, but I think as a general rule, the foot ring belongs where the floor meets the wall. Um, in this bowl, there's a curve here, so it's not really obvious to see where it is, but in my estimation, I think that point is right here. Okay, so translate it to the outside of the pot, that's right there. And that means the outside of the foot ring is gonna be right there. All right, so using that as a starting point, if that's the outside of my foot ring, the inside of my foot ring will be right there. All right, so I'm gonna measure how thick this pot is here and here. So putting my finger on the inside of the bowl to catch the point of the needle tool, hopefully I'll stick the needle tool all the way through until the point just touches my finger. And then take a measurement. All right, so you can see how thick the wall is there. It's pretty thick, which is good. Um, I wanna leave behind a wall that is about a quarter of an inch thick. So that means I am gonna trim away a little more than a quarter of an inch at this point at the outside of the foot ring. All right, so now I'm gonna measure the pot here. Again, this is where the inside of the foot ring will be. All right, so the pot is a little bit thinner at that point as it should be if the wall of this pot makes a curve. Oops, lost my measurement. Okay, the wall is a little bit thinner here, so in order to leave behind a quarter inch thick wall here, I'm gonna trim away slightly less than a quarter of an inch at this point right here. All right, and there's one more measurement I wanna take and that's right here at the middle of the floor. All right, and you can see the wall is even thinner still at this point compared to this point. And again, that makes sense. 
given the shape of the inside of the bowl. And I'm just going to keep this distance in mind when I get to the point when I'm cleaning out, trimming out the clay from this part of the bowl. All right, so I need to center this pot onto my wheel head. I'm going to do that by starting with the concentric circles that's come with the wheel and putting it down as close to centered as possible. Uh, with the wheel spinning very slowly, I'm going to touch my finger very lightly to the pot. And as the pot goes around a few times, I will learn where the pot bulges out and touches my finger the most. And after a few revolutions, I'll learn how to anticipate when that bulge is going to touch my finger right there. And just going to push the pot slightly back towards center, away from the bulge. I'm going to do this. This usually takes two or three tries before you get it perfectly centered. Okay, um, what I just explained to you is the mechanics behind tap centering. Um, only I did it in very slow motion. <laughs> uh, Real-time tap centering is done much faster with a, at a wheel speed of about this, and it's done like tap, 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 and you're done. Uh, but what I just showed you is the mechanics behind how that works. Only I did it slowly so you can see exactly how that works. Um, we will do real-time tap centering in future videos. All right, so now that my pot is centered, I'm going to hold it down with some clay wads. I always apply clay wads in multiples of two, two at a time, and that way I'm not going to knock my pot off center by applying one wad at a time. If you put one wad down at a time, you might push your pot off center, but if you do two at a time, your pot stays in the, in, in the middle. All right, so step one is to take my trimming tool. I'm going to start removing this corner of clay until I hit the mark that represents the outside of the foot ring. All right, so now that I've established this size and plane, uh, my next step is to carve out the wall on the outside of the foot ring. And because I made a measurement, I know that's going to be a little bit more than a quarter of an inch thick. So I'm going to come in from to the clay from the side. I'm going to use the corner of my trimming tool and establish that wall coming in from the side. And again, I know from my measurement that I want this to be a little more than a quarter of an inch tall. Okay, good. Um, the next step is to take this nice curve that we established while we were throwing the pot, and I want to make this curve continue all the way to the base of the wall of the foot ring, which means I'm going to remove all of this clay now. Notice that both of my hands are touching the trimming tool. Whenever possible, I use both hands. I've heard a lot of pottery students say over the years things like they love throwing but they hate trimming <laughs> or that trimming seems to be some kind of a chore or an afterthought and one of my goals as a pottery teacher is to talk you out of that attitude. I think trimming is just as much fun as throwing and it's, it's as important if not more important than throwing. Um, and I think the secret is if you know how to do it well, you're going to start to like trimming. So I'm here to show you how to do it as, as accurately as possible. All right, so I'm done with this curve. Moving on to this part of the pot. Um, here's my mark for the inside of the foot ring wall. And I know from my measurement that I need to go down slightly less than a quarter of an inch. So again, I'm going to use the corner of my trimming tool and go down at that mark.
I'm going to remove the remaining clay from here. And again, knowing from my measurement, I don't want to go down quite as far at that very middle point as I did at the point of the inside of my foot ring wall. Um, based on my measurements, the clay that remains here should form a slight dome shape, which should match the curve on the inside of the bowl. All of the holes I made earlier are gone now. Just the act of trimming your pot will usually seal them shut. And even if they're still there, that's fine. You can just take a rib and seal them closed. It's really easy to close them because they're so small. Okay, good. And then lastly, um, the corner, this foot ring has those unpleasantly sharp corners on the edge. I want to round those off just like I did to the rim of the pot when I threw it. I think that's another good general rule of thumb. You want the, you want your foot ring to resemble your rim in terms of size and roundness. Not size exactly in terms of its thickness and the round, the rounded quality of the end of it. Good, so um, uh, like I said before in the tools section, I like to use this rib to burnish smooth these surfaces. So you can see my clay body's pretty rough, so when I trim it, it turns out pretty rough. I like to burnish it smooth. You may not need to do this depending on your clay body. Um, personally, when I see really rough clay bodies, that are not burnished smooth. I don't really like that. I mean, in the context of functional pottery, that is. Um, all right, so now that I've burnished smooth this broad surface and this broad surface, uh, it's time to work on this foot ring. These surfaces are a little bit too small for my rib, so that's where this sponge comes in. This sponge does a great job of smoothing out leather hard pots. I actually don't like this sponge for throwing because I think the texture is too fine. It, it gets clogged with clay too quickly when you're throwing, but it's great for smoothing out leather hard pots because of the fine texture. And um, even though I burnished these surfaces smooth, I'm gonna swipe them with the sponge anyways, just for a little extra finish. All right, so this is where you get to sign or stamp the bottom of your pot. I do it with a little stamp. All right, so now you get to pick up your pot and turn it over and feel it. It should feel, well, it's a small pot, so it's gonna feel light no matter what, but more importantly, it should feel balanced. Like it should feel like there's no heavier spot on this pot. It should feel like the weight is distributed evenly throughout the whole pot. It should feel really good. All right, so there's one last thing I want you to do to this pot. which is to take your cutoff wire and cut it in half. All right, and this way you can see if you did a good job with trimming, this is what you wanna see. You wanna see an evenly thick wall all the way from the walls through the floor. And you wanna see foot rings that match in size, width and roundedness to like the rim of your pot. They should look pretty similar. Okay, um, so this is your homework assignment. Your homework is to make this bowl again. And if you found that when you cut this bowl in half, if you found any thin spots or thick spots or places where you could have done a better job trimming, I want you to cut the next bowl in half as well. And I want you to repeat that until you get one that looks like this, where the wall looks pretty even all the way throughout. It doesn't matter how many attempts you make in order to get to something like this. Um, Learning pottery is all about practice, and every attempt that you make is worth your time and effort. So keep doing it until you get one like this. And once you get one that you're happy with the way its profile looks when you cut it in half, you can do one more and you get to keep the last one.